Uh, first, Rick, thank you, thank you. You have no clue how 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 I much I want to talk to you. I also want to talk to your editor because what you did was amazing. So thank you so much for taking your time and congratulations. Oh, thank you. Thanks for having us, and I'm sure I could arrange my editor to speak to you. So thank you. I mean, what you, the two of you did uh, was amazing. I, even, I, I have no clue how were you able to keep it, you know, coherent and then fun and be, give it, get, take into consideration the difficulty level of, of what, what you were trying to do. You were filming in, the, in 17 countries, all through Zoom, all through virtual uh, applications. I mean, when you spoke to the, to the, to the you know, writer, the, the, the script, the, the screenwriter, did you have any clue that where the story was going? Yeah, so so when the pandemic hit, we had a think tank, we had an international think tank, and we're fortunate enough to shoot a lot of our films around the world. So we brought a lot of our colleagues together and said, okay, well, how do we make a film if we can't be in the same room together? And we're a very writer-focused company, and so we had Ken Cannons in the company, and him and I started sharing these ideas, and I think the original concept came with, what if five, five world leaders were assassinated at the same time around the world by the same person? And uh, there's another story for someone else to make. But that was the inception of it. And Cam is so amazing and so fast that he, he ran with it. And like 10 days later, we had a script that everyone read and said, wow, th this is A, good. B, it's makeable under the restraints that we are facing. And so... We reached out to all of our partners around the world and started convincing them that, hey, we're going to need you. And I know you're available because there's a pandemic going on and uh, started putting it together real quick. What was their reaction to the actors? I mean, everybody did some great and the cast is so good. Anthony Hopkins, uh, Lily, I also love Lily, by the way, I interviewed her uh, in the past. Alex, I mean, anybody did some great. What was their reaction of the actors when they, when they when you pitched an idea and this is what we have to do. Like you just said, you, you guys had nothing to do, so let's work on it. But what was their initial reaction when they saw the scope of the story and how it was going to play it out? You know, I, I think it's, first of all, it's great. I knew them in advance. And so they knew that when, you know, Rick has these crazy ideas, maybe, maybe we should hear them out. Um, they don't always work. But, you know, I, I think a lot of it was the fact that, yes, they were doing nothing. But then you share the script with them. Then you share the kind of the grand plan. And the grand plan at the time wasn't, sequels and shooting around the world it was like hey let's have some fun make this film but i also knew that with the pandemic that you know every country was facing the same situation so the filmmakers that we are working with that we work with are top tier professionals mm -hmm. so we would have a great crew all around the world that could come together and as long as everybody brought it which we knew they could then hopefully you'd have an outcome that was something worthwhile but i know going into it the first few days of shooting and it was structured like a real film. We had Artie Carlson was the AD and we would stand on set using Zoom. It's not a Zoom movie, right? We'd stand on set. The AD would line things up. Okay, guys, quiet on the set. Let's turn, your, turn off your cameras. Okay, make sure, oh, flick that light in the background, your like and share sign in the back. We got to fix that. It's too bright. Okay, guys, you good? And roll cameras and they would, you know, do it themselves. And then and then we would we would do a take, you know? So once we did the first couple of days, I think that's when they realized this is something worthwhile. Something that I really uh, found interesting is that the, the movie, obviously, the, the, the pandemic helped develop the movie, but the, 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 the pandemic has nothing to do with the movie. Yet the name, the name of the movie is called Zero Contact. Obviously, that's a spoiler <laughs> if, we, if we explain why. So without diving, diving into too much detail, uh, what was it? How did the title come about? And, and, and how can people, I don't want to enter the spoilers, that's the thing. It's, I mean, it's just, how did the whole title come about and how, can you explain to people how the, 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 how the story, without getting into detail, uh, revolves around the title? Yes, yeah, so, so originally when we said, okay, well, can, can we make a film this way with, with all of our friends and colleagues? Okay, if we're going to do it, it, it can't be a horror movie slasher flick. And it can't be about COVID or the pandemic. Mm -hmm. It's got to be about something else. Because because we've assumed other people were going to try to do something mm -hmm. like this. Because you know we're all filmmakers. You get bored sitting still. So and I know there's some out there that were Zoom horror movies that mm -hmm. nobody wants to relive living on Zoom in a pandemic as much as possible. Um, so right away we knew we kind of separated ourselves. If you could have this tech scientific thriller 
that was, you know, the mode of the, the way we told the story using this remote connection played into the storyline of them all having to come together around the world. It was also important if you're going to make a movie that has stands any chance, you need to have an international storyline, we feel. And so by doing this, you could bring people with different dialects. And, and we had to, it's almost a podcast. We had to find value in every component, right? So whether it be the sound, the accent of Hawk and Nordquist that will tell the audience, wow, this is a global thriller. It's not just shot in Los Angeles or something, right? So that's kind of how we come, come at it with Riku and Tokyo. All of a sudden, it tells the audience this is international. And so we kind of had a, a formula that we were trying to stick to without really knowing what a formula was because no one's ever done this. Um, zero contact originally was called 92 and which is was tied to what may have happened in 1992 as uh, that would be a spoiler alert you'll see but 92 was also the name of a potential time machine that Finley was working on it's not really a spoiler um, and that number kind of stuck because the whole production and post-production the joke was wherever we went, it was 92 degrees outside. I'm traveling 92 miles an hour. There's graffiti, 92. So we couldn't escape that number. We kind of thought, hey, this, this number means something more so. But it was obvious that to, you know, to release the movie Zero Contact being the double entendre, it was just the perfect title. And uh, 92 and all those elements will play into the whole universe that we're building. Uh, two more questions before I let you go. And what the, the second thing that stood out to me was um, where we can go with the story. Once, I, obviously, once again, I don't want to enter the spoilers, obviously. But once I finished watching it, I was like, we can go so many places with with this, not just beyond being stuck in here. But it, it just was awesome that we we know that I, I was doing my research and I found out that there are there are two more movies that are already coming. They're in the works now. So. It's just, I felt so so good to me. I think, hey, I know we can go to other places after this one. Um, where, what can you tell us of, of, of again, without entering any spoilers, that we, you, can, you can expect people to go uh, when they see the story after it's all said and done? I think the best part about this film is that it's, it will always be the origin story and you will always mm -hmm. need to re reference back to it to understand where the world was built from. But I think the thing is, is that when you tell a story about time travel, um, first of all, the world, there's so many possibilities where you can go with it when you're using time travel. But I think what you're, what you're going to see is the seriousness and sophistication of where the storyline is going to go. And that is, if it's about fame and fortune as a power figure to build a time machine, what if it wasn't always about that and it was about something more of a life world world connection to family or something like that. So a sophisticated, uh, intelligent thriller, I think, is where this is going to go. That it's going to require people to kind of see the origin story. Obviously, the sequels are not going to be told using this device, unless there's another pandemic, which I hope not. But um, those will be shot conventionally all around the world. But but that's what I like. I, what's out of what I love that we come in from this one and then the grand sculpture of everything with the other two, I'm like blown away where we can go with it. Um, I yeah. think my final question should be, this is something you said, you said I think the, big, the biggest spoiler in here is just time, time travel. And this is just a topic that people just eat up, right? People just love talking about time travel, talking about traveling the, in back to the future, in the past, et cetera, et cetera. What can people that may are not into this specific genre, how do we, you know, entice them? Because there's so many emotional things going on in the story besides that. How can we tell them, hey, you must watch this movie? What can you tell them? You know, what's interesting is personally, I'm not a sci-fi fan, really. This film would be considered sci-fi, I believe. Mm -hmm. But imagine if if this wasn't sci-fi and it was science, right? And you use quantum theory and quantum physics for the people that actually have an understanding of that without, you know, it doesn't have to be, uh, you don't have to have a full understanding of quantum physics to realize that what if you use science to find the past versus what if it was real? What if, what if inception was real, right? And if there are those ways to get there using science, not science fiction, how terrifying would that be and yet thrilling at the same time, right? Yeah. And I think that is a takeaway from this film that you're going to learn is that, that you're going to be left going, well, wait a second, I can go back, right? Yeah. That's so true. I think that's part, I, 
it's science that people can learn that. I think that's uh, that's going to be key. That's that's great, um, uh, Rick. Uh, I, I think it's time for me. Thank you again. Uh, congratulations! I loved what I saw, and I want to see more. Hopefully, awesome. those two other movies we can get them out there because I absolutely I'm I'm a I'm a fan of sci-fi. I'm a fan of time travel. So that was down my alley, and and obviously the ending is difficult to do interviews without spoiling stuff around it, but. <laughs> the ending and where it can go i absolutely love that so thank you well thank you for having me and you know once it's out there we can talk about the ending on your show so there you go yeah that was, that's, that's perfect thank you all right thank you